Hello again, everyone. Off and running on this Thursday, January 10th edition, Thurbert Action. Jason Blewett joining you from Brisk Gulfstream Park. Got up today, it was like 58 degrees. Boy, I have turned into a Floridian, but I'm proud of that. Good to have you with us again, everybody. We've got 10 races on this Thursday card. We're fast and firm, and in fact, we'll get plenty more as we send it up to track announcer Pete Aiello. 10 races on the Thursday program. Beautiful weather conditions for horse racing. It's cooled off a few degrees since we've seen you. Temperatures in the mid 60s here today. Fast main track and a firm turf. First of the day over the firm turf at one mile. Starter allowance optional claiming event. Price tag $25,000. Scratch the three, eight, and 10. Miguel Vasquez rides number four, Marksman. Off time favorites included the one, Colton's Corner, and number seven, Uncle B. Racing at Gulfstream. Beautiful start for Uncle B, who's headed off for the yearly lead. Sent hard between horses as Love Conquers. Colton's Corner emerges at the rail, so the inside pair will take the lead in the run to the first turn. After the sharp start, Uncle B puts himself in a good spot, third behind the speed, ahead of Marksman and Strike Midnight. At the back are Race Me Home and Toughest Ombre. Around the first turn they go. Love Conquers now gets clear to lead a length and a half. On the outside, taking over second is Colton's corner. Castellano guides him to the two path to flank the leader, so Uncle B will stay at the fence. Strike Midnight is fourth and only two and a half lengths off the lead, followed by Marksman. Outside of him goes Toughest Ombre. Race Me Home is last through an opening quarter of 24 and four. Down the back stretch they go. Love Conquers putting up the numbers. Colton corner, the nearest pursuer, second. Toward the inside, Uncle B a joint third alongside Strike Midnight in fourth. Marksman held up between horses. Race Me Home is at the rail, and Toughest Ombre is three wide. Inside half a mile away as they start to quicken up the pace. Love Conquers leads the way three parts of a length. Colton's corner on the outside is second at the rail and Uncle B a joint third. Strike Midnight gets started in the red blinkers on the outside. Three wide is Toughest Ombre, Marksman and Race Me Home at the inside as they run for home. Love Conquers has been in front from the outset and turns first with the advantage. On the outside in Colton's corner, three wide Strike Midnight out of a pocket as Uncle B needs some place to work. Eighth of a mile to go in Colton's corner strides forward into the clear now uncle b is loose and charging and uncle b is up for the lead he's under very confident handling i router tease jr and uncle b going away colton's corner was second third was strike midnight close after that 137 flat Number seven, Uncle B put himself in a perfect position to be successful, and jockey Irad Ortiz Jr. just pointed him in the right direction from there, and the son of Zensational gets the job done to start the day. Pretty easy as well for Lily Curtinez and David Caprio. One, Colton's corner was second ahead of the nine, strike midnight. He ran a good race today on the Class Ike and ended up third. To the second race now in the start of the early pick four at six furlongs. Maiden Claimers in for 12,500. A field of seven, favorite was the three, Money Purse. And they're off. From the far outside, Go Girl gone was away quickly and fires to a clear advantage from between horses. Starship Saturn away racing in second. Magic Makers on the outside and racing into third. At the inside, Little Pow races ahead of Money Purse, then High Wind and Cocktails or Candy. They speed to the half mile point and Hugo Sanchez puts Go Girl Gone on the lead, leads the way three parts of length. On the comeback try, Starship Saturn is second. Panichi wants out with Little Pow from third. Back to fourth while three wide is Magic Maker ahead of Money Purse, then High Wind and Cocktails or Candy. Three eighths of a mile to go. Go Girl Gone still has the lead. Trying to get through his Little Pow tight thing, uh, tight quarters there, but the rail is now open and there goes Luca and Little Pow onto the front. Go Girl Gone is back to second. Starship Saturn is third from the back and trying to run home is high wind and then down inside goes money purse but at the top of the lane the big class dropper little pow has blown this wide open leads by five money purse toward the inside now takes up the slack second from go girl gone in third back to fourth and cocktails are candy but little pow with a rail skimming ride from luca panici at six to one is an easy winner little pow easy Second is Money Purse. Third is Go Girl Gone, ahead of Cocktails or Candy. There's an old racetrack adage that the best hop is a drop, and that worked to perfection here with number one, Little Pow, in race number two. He was the only horse in this race plunging in class, and she got the job done under a rail-skimming ride from Luca Panici for Kiko D'Angelo and Group 07 C Racing. Second, number three, Money Purse, and third was number seven, Go Girl Gone. We'll be right back. One of the world's most anticipated thoroughbred racing events of the year returns. 
the third annual Pegasus World Cup Invitational at Gulfstream Park in South Florida. Drawing competition from around the world with a $16 million purse split between two grade one races. On the dirt and on the turf. Experience the incredible fashion, spectacular world-class service and entertainment. And the unrivaled adrenaline of the Pegasus World Cup Invitational. Saturday, January 26th at Gulfstream Park. Get your tickets now at PegasusWorldCup.com. Back now for the third race of the afternoon at six furlongs. Maiden Claimers in for a price tag of twelve thousand five hundred. Scratch the three. Vicky Apple. Lionel Reyes rides four. Enough and then some. The favorite was the one. The stronger cat. And they're off. From the outside, begin was away well. Here's the favorite, Stronger Cat, sent through at the fence to take over the lead. Enough and then some away in the top flight begins on the outside, trading sense between horses. Alongside her is Conquest Point. Out the back door early, the trailer is all about hay. They speed to the half mile point. Stronger Cat leads the way by a neck. Enough and then some is second, begin on the outside third. These three have gone four ahead of trading sense, and then on her inside is Conquest Point. All about hay is last. 23 and 2 for a very reasonable opening quarter speed and up front stronger cat has the inside edge and a clear advantage working hard to the second and third horses enough and then some and begin well clear of conquest point who's fourth with five sixteenths to go jockey irat ortiz jr not asking stronger cat for any effort but she continues to widen ortiz just took a look over his shoulder he has to have a big smile on his face through a 47 and two half mile off the turn on the stretch drive stronger cat has this to throw away she's eight on top toward the inside all about hey rallies to take second ahead of enough and then some third but inside the final furlong minimal handling and an easy win for the big favorite stronger cat stronger cat for Safi joseph jr and frank calabrese wrapped up by six all about hey was second enough and then some third number one stronger cat proves much the best horse off the barn change for trainer Safi joseph jr the class drop in the barn change really humbled the competition here today and Rod Ortiz Jr. rode the daughter of Reward the Cat for Frank Calabrese. Number two, All About Hay, was second ahead of the four, enough and then some, ran third. To the fourth race now at six furlongs, claimers in for $6,250. A field of eight, heavily favored, was the eight, pretty shady. And they're off. Pretty shady with an alert reaction from the gate and puts a neck on top toward the rail. Here's Tybash moving to challenge. These two work ahead of Kaylee's girl, who's back to third. Away fourth is Blue Whale, then Paula with outside running Little Dirty Girl. Out the back door early, our perspective moment, and Glotanasa. They speed to the half mile point, and at 40 to 1, Tybash calls the shots faster than favorite Pretty Shady, who races from second. Third at the inside is Kaylee's girl looking to get to the outside for Richard Mitchell, then to the outside and Blue Whale, followed by Glotonasa. Paula is out the rail for Miguel Vasquez, about six lengths off the lead. Two better than Little Dirty Girl, and at the back is perspective moment. Five sixteenths to go. Tie badge overhauled by Pretty Shady, who puts a neck on top. Kaylee's girl is still on hold. She's not played her cards yet. She's behind the speed. Ridden next is Blue Whale. Paula's going to try to find some place to go. Wide on the course, and Glotanasa's got a shot, and they line up and turn in. Pretty Shady now asked to finish the job, but Kaylee's girl got a split, and she's up for the lead. Blue Whale over the top and charging hard with Glotanasa. Pretty Shady has been defeated. Final eighth of a mile. Here's Blue Whale striding forward to take the lead. Uh, pretty, K, uh, pretty Shady is trying to hold on to third, but Blue Whale's a winner. Blue Whale at 25 to 1. Kaylee's girl was second, closer for third. Paula split horses late to photo with Glotanasa and Pretty Shady at 113 and 3. Number 8, Pretty Shady is the type of filly that really needs a clear advantage to be at her best. She did not get that here today, and she didn't fire her best shot. The upset win goes to the 7, Blue Whale, with a major form reversal under jockey Jorge Urdanita for Jaime Mejia and the Thoroughbred Champions Training Center. To the fifth race now on the start of the Rainbow Six on turf at a mile and the 16th. Maiden claimers in for $20,000. Three jockey changes, Edgar Prado on the four, Mont, Luis Saez on the six, Knocked by the Sea, and Romero Mirage on the 11, Monday morning memo. And they're up.
Knocked by the sea away well, so too was Roll On Dude moving between horses. That's Knowledge into the top flight. And the Pirates is being sent along. The Pirates is going to land in front. Roll On Dude comes away to race in second from the outside. Mr. Nobody now gets over from the 12 post. He races in the two path, a joint third with Knowledge to his inside. A length and a half back to the favorite, Jess Kitten You, who's fifth and down toward the rail, working ahead of Knocked by the Sea. Restart is mid flight and situated about seven lengths off the lead. Just ahead of him was Monday Morning Memo. Then back to the outside goes Tiz Luna ahead of Rage Away, who's toward the rail. Second last is Mont, and then dropping back to last is Maturin. Into the back stretch they go. The opening quarter was 22 and 1. Strong pace being put up. The Pirates has a narrow lead, pushed along every step by Roll On Dude. These top two have gone four ahead of Mr. Nobody and Knowledge, third and fourth. They've gone four ahead of Just Kitten You, who's racing by himself fifth, four clear of Knock by the Sea. Then Monday morning memo ahead of Restart and Tiz Luna, two in front of Rage Away, still third last. Second last is Mont, and the trailer remains Maturin. Strung out over a lot of ground as they leave with the back stretch and move around the far turn, 46 and two for a half mile. These top two have been at each other since they sprung it, but they're converging on the leaders now. Four wide, Mr. Nobody, three wide, Knowledge, no place to go. Just kitten you, looks like he'll angle five wide for a run. Two better than knocked by the sea, then Tiz Luna and they're at the top of the stretch. The Pirates still maintains a narrow lead. Mr. Nobody, Just kitten you, swung into action and Mont down the stand side. Coming on very well here. It's Mont and Edgar Prado shifting about, but shifting into high gear putting a neck in front just kitten you is back to second and that's where he'll finish behind mont mont wins by length just kitten you was second close for third restart photos with mr nobody then the pirates in 143 and one number four mont comes storming down the center of the race course to get the victory at a nice price under hall of famer edgar prado for scooter dickey and the ascent thoroughbreds number one just kitten you the big favorite got a good trip just got outrun while second ahead of the seven restart who was best of the rest, a wild third. The early pick five in the books. We'll take a commercial break and bring you the late pick five. Don't go away. And Go Zipper is pulling away. Go Zipper blows them away with an eye-opening performance. Back now for race six on the program, start of the late pick five. Five and a half furlongs over the main track, starter allowance optional claiming event. Scratch the one and five, all eyes on number eight, a bit of both, a one to nine choice. And they're off, level beginning. Soon after the start, a bit of both puts it into high gear, but up to take the lead is Celebrate Me. Down at the inside goes I'll Make You Smile. These two race ahead of a bit of both, who's back to third. The three at the back are Crumb Bun, Rolling Bobby, and Miss Harry. They make their way down the backstretch and go to the half-mile point. And with the advantage, it's now I'll make you smile by an neck. Three wide, a bit of both. From between horses, it's Celebrate Me. These three are going quickly through a 22-3 and three opening quarter. Racing ahead of Crumb Bun and Rolling Bobby, Miss Harry is still last as they round the far turn. There's five sixteenths to run. I'll make you smile is in front. Three wide, a bit of both gets the green light to try to make some ground. From between horses and Celebrate Me. Trying to run home from the back, both Crumb Bun and Rolling Bobby. Miss Harry's outpaced and they're at the top of the stretch. Ortiz Brothers, 1-2, but it's the longer price of the two. It's I'll Make You Smile. Now at the eighth pole on top by two and a half. One to nine favorite, a bit of both, struggling to offer much of an effort in second. Then Karambun into the outside rolling Bobby to the wire, five to one, and a mild upset from I'll Make You Smile makes it two in a row. A bit of both upended as the big favorite. She was second, third was Crumba. Minute six and five one hundred. Jockey Jose Ortiz gets the better of his brother in race number six, upending the one to nine favorite with number two, I'll Make You Smile, who goes gate to wire under Mike Tomlinson tutelage for Irv Woolsey and Ralph Kinder. And Jose Ortiz on board for the winning ride. The starter of Stroll beats the one to nine choice. Third was number four, Crumb Bun. To the seventh race now on the start of the late pick four at six furlongs. Claimers in for $25,000. Scratch the one and two, a field of six. Favorite was the six, Midnight Miracle. Check to last with CAC Shakira. 
Out first is Blue Sky Venezuela, tackled by Bargain Air from between horses Midnight Miracle at the rail and Tong Shu, four across the course early. Shall return is away second last while racing fifth, and after a subpar beginning, the trailer is CAC Shakira. They make their way to the half mile point. The speed of the speed is Tong Shu, who leads the way a length and a quarter. Second is Midnight Miracle. Third outside and running on is Bargain Air. Back to fourth shall return. That's all for Blue Sky Venezuela. And at the back is CAC Shakira. 23 and 1 for an opening quarter speed. Less than three furlongs to run. Tong Shu bidding for the upset. Leads by two and a half. Castellano gets after Midnight Miracle to start on attack while second to the outside and shall return third. Back for more is Blue Sky Venezuela around Bargain Air. And at the back is CAC Shakira as they're at the top of the stretch. They went 47 and 2 for a half mile. Tong Shu turns first with the lead. On the inside and Midnight Miracle down the center. Shall return widest of all in Blue Sky Venezuela. Final eighth of a mile at the rail. Midnight Miracle trying to seal the deal here. Outside and shall return. Coming to her. Shall return. Midnight Miracle. These two. It's Midnight Miracle on it. Midnight Miracle by a neck in the end from shall return and 114 flat. Favorite players saved by the wire is number six. Midnight Miracle holds on to win it. Under jockey Javier Castellano for Ron Paolucci Racing Stable and Robert S. Jr. Second number eight, shall return, who just missed ahead of the five, Blue Sky Venezuela, who ran third. Eighth race now, the start of the late pick three on turf at one mile, a starter allowance contest for Phillies and Mares, four-year-olds and up. A field of 10, favorite was the two, Kyoto. And they're off. Fast track Catherine was off just a step slow. Toward the rail, Amazing Audrey's headed off for the early lead alongside Kyoto in the early stages. Far outside, and Dupree looking to get over. In the three path already is Miss Accuse as they round the first turn. Miss Munnings is next toward the rail, followed inside by Fast Track Catherine. Classic Lady splits of that duo, a length better than Call Me Kayla. Out wide is Mula Shmula, and the trailer is Mohani. They run into the back stretch now after the opening quarter went to Amazing Audrey and Irat Ortiz Jr. Three parts of a length in front through that opening quarter in 23 and 3. On the flank of the leader is Kyoto from second, three wide, and Miss Accused third. Miss Munnings is at the rail in fourth, out wide is Anne Dupree. Then sandwiched between horses, Classic Lady and Fast Track Catherine is at the rail. Three parts better than Call Me Kayla, who's three wide. That means Moolah Shmoolah is four wide, and still the trailer is Mohaney. They make their way to the half mile point. Nobody's reached Amazing Audrey yet. She won a 47 and three half mile and maintains control. Out after second is Kyoto toward the rail. Miss Munnings needs a way through from third. Miss Accused fourth. At the inside and fast track, Catherine for in the two path classic lady. Working hard out three deep is Anne Dupree. A length and a half in front of Call Me Kayla as they race to the top of the stretch. 47 and three for the opening half mile. There's a quarter of a mile left to go. Miss Accused launching a bid after Amazing Audrey into the clear. Miss Munnings is loose and charging hard. Miss Munnings is charging at the leader with an eighth of a mile to go. Ortiz Brothers 1-2 again. And up on the outside, Jose and Miss Munnings to take an arrow lead. Amazing Audrey is back to second. These two well clear of the others. Miss Munnings will win it. Second is Amazing Audrey, well clear of third, a classic lady. And then Call Me Kayla, 134-3. Number three, Miss Munnings parlays a good trip to success in race number eight at a big price for trainer John Kimmel. Chucky Jose Ortiz outrides his brother Irad again today. Second time he's done that, this one for owner Torby Morton. Second number one, Amazing Audrey, who completes the Ortiz brother exactive ahead of the A6 classic lady who ran third. Time for commercial break. The late daily double is right after this. Back now for the ninth race on the program. First half of the late daily double at one mile over the main track. Starter allowance optional claiming event. Price tag here, $50,000. Field of six signed on. This was a wide open for the And they're off. Bounced around bad at the beginning was Grandpa Iso. He was last to begin. Also banged around at the beginning was star player and Arriva Derla. 
Star players away to look for the yearly lead. Rayo My King has speed, and Arriva Durla writes himself after an early scrum. Out wide on the course is Quasar Moon. He's smoking hot as toward the rail. And after a subpar getaway, Grand Paraiso finds himself last of the six and about five lengths off the lead. The opening quarter was complete and a swift 23 and one. Down the back stretch they go. Tyler Gaffleone and star player take no prisoners. They lead the way a length and a quarter over Rayo My King in second. He smoking hot is at the inside third, followed fourth by Arriva Durla. Outside in fifth is Quasar Moon, already given some uh, ass to quicken up moves there by Luis Saez. And three to the trailer, Grand Paraiso. They moved out of the far turn run, 46 and one for a half mile speed. The advantage to star player by a length and a half. Rayo My King, he's smoking hot second and third. Quasar Moon worked on while fourth, back to fifth, Arriva Durla, and still nothing from Grand Paraiso. Opening half mile was a strong 46 and one with 5 16ths to go. Star player continues to roll along up front, but he's smoking hot into the clear now and on the attack. He's smoking hot. Paco looks over his shoulder both directions and sees that his new or his mounts, he's smoking hot, is up for the lead. Trying to fight on his star player from second. They've left the rest behind with an eighth of a mile to go. This is all about he's smoking hot. He's smoking hot, giving a reminder to finish the job, but the job is finished indeed as he's pulling clear with authority star player is second behind he's smoking hot he's in front second is star player third is quasar moon and fourth grand paraiso 139 and two number one he's smoking hot appears to be rounding into form and figuring it out as he gets a very impressive victory here today at two to one under paco lopez for joe orsino and owner jack hendricks it was a good run from two star player he did all the heavy lifting and settled for second ahead of number six quasar moon who ran third to the 10th and final race on turf at one mile. Allowance optional claiming runners of the Florida bread variety. Optional price tag here, $16,000. Scratch the four, 10, and 11. Rider change on one minute madness, make it Javier Castellano. Favorite was number three, Super Scat Daddy. And runners away. Minute Madness from the rail gate, away the best. Up on the outside, expected ruler has some speed. Far outside, the gray, my point exactly, trying to work over. Moving out the inside, it's Trumpy with Super Scat Daddy between horses. Blue Loot is third last, second last is apart from the crowd, and the trailer is famous fact. Around the first turn they go, and up front, the leader is Minute Madness and Castellano by a length and a half. Racing second, expected ruler down at the inside. Trumpy follows along third. From fourth, and my point exactly, back to fifth, the team of Super Scat Daddy and Blue Loot. Two better than apart from the crowd, who's in the crowd. He's about five lengths off the lead. And apart from the crowd, his famous fact, last of all. 23 and two for the opening quarter speed. Down the back stretch they go. At 24 to one, Minute Madness has a narrow advantage. Tugging very hard as expected ruler. That's because Blue Loot went three wide and went outside of him. So the second horse is really keyed up. Meanwhile, Super Scat Daddy held up between horses. Trumpy at the rail. Three wide, my point exactly, ahead of apart from the crowd. And Famous Fact tries to play catch up from the back as they round the far turn. 47 and three for a half mile speed. Jackie Paco Lopez, an expected ruler, put an neck in front. Super Scat Daddy has to wait his turn. Blue Loot has him boxed in. Trumpy at the inside, followed by a part from the crowd. Minute Madness battles on toward the rail as they reach the top of the stretch. Rail open for Trumpy. Here's Trumpy trying to get Minute Madness. Expected Ruler down the stand side. Super Scat Daddy is loose and charging. Final eighth of a mile. Expected Ruler has the lead. Super Scat Daddy up into second, but Expected Ruler is clear. Expected Ruler to win by a length in the end. Super Scat Daddy second. Blue Loot was third, then Trumpy 136 flat. Tough spot for Paco Lopez down the backstretch on expected ruler. He had him exactly where he wanted him, and then Blue Loot moved outside, really forcing expected ruler to get keyed up. You can see it down the backstretch. Paco tried to fight with him, got him to settle, and then kicked on for the score. And an impressive effort. Paco sweeps the late daily double. His final turn racing stable, the owner of the son of the Awadi Senimo, Robert Falcone Jr., the winning trainer. We did have multiple winning tickets in today's Rainbow Six. That yields a carryover going forward to tomorrow of more than $15,000. And that'll do it as we uh, close down the Thursday action here at Gulfstream. Do keep in mind, Friday is tomorrow. We've got Acacia up in the Beat the Expert and a real solid Saturday card. We're running 12 races, so we'll have that first early post of about 11.45 a.m. Two stakes in the mix, including Heart to Heart, who's returning to Gulfstream Park. He's a fan favorite for Brian Lynch. A lot to look forward to over the next few days. Good night, everybody. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. I've been working all day. Hit the hay. Hit the hay. What do you say? Tired. 
Let me tell you, Jack, I'm so tired. 